Hello everybody, this is Max with Fun With Guns and today I'm going to talk about the 3844. I finally managed to find a decent price on a Smith & Wesson 3844. Now, I've talked about this gun before in other videos, but a quick recap. In the late 1920s, both law enforcement and hunters were finding that the traditional 38 revolvers built on what today we call the K-frame were a little bit on the weak side. The average 38 load was about 850 feet per second with a 158 grain bullet. And a lot of folks just found that it didn't have the necessary stopping power for law enforcement and frequently was insufficient for certain kinds of game. So people like Elmer Key started stoking up hotter loads putting them in these guns, and we're getting some pretty incredible velocities out of them. Uh, but of course, when you get those kinds of velocities, you get a lot of chamber pressure. So they were pushing Smith & Wesson to take their wonderful 44 caliber, what today we call in-frame design, and chamber it for 38. So they finally, in 1930, developed this, the Smith & Wesson 3844, literally a 38 caliber revolver on a 44 caliber frame. Now, this is basically the same gun as the Smith & Wesson 1917, but as you'll notice to my 1917, this has the ejector shroud put back on it. Remember, the ejector shroud had been removed from the earlier triple lock series at the request of the British and the Canadians, partly to save cost and partly because they saw it as a collection point for dirt and mud in the trenches. But you can notice the similarity of the two guns. The 3844 has a lot of steel in the cylinder, which is only bored out to 3D7, which allows shooters to stoke up very hot loads. And they were able to get velocities out of this gun that essentially rival a modern day 357 Magnum. And of course, as I have mentioned in previous videos, this gun basically became the basis for the 357 Magnum. By 1935, Smith & Wesson was afraid that these hot loads would be put in a standard size 38 and after repeated use may blow the gun up. So. They decided to take this gun, bore out the cylinder a little bit more, 135 one thousandths of an inch, and extend the case to match for and relabel the new cartridge, the 357 Magnum. That way, those bullets could not mistakenly be put into a 38. Smith & Wesson designed what was called the registered Magnum. They were handmade and they were $60 a piece. They came out in 1935. And they were based on this gun except uh, they had a heavier barrel, a ramp front sight, and a few other nice features. But $60 back then was about $1,800 today, depending on how you convert the money. So they weren't selling very many of them. In fact, they only made them to order. This pistol was so popular that they made another version with adjustable sights and a few other frills and fancies and called it the Outdoorsman. This gun was manufactured until 1966. I believe that was when production ended for this series of guns. Now, when Smith & Wesson went to its model naming system, this got the nomenclature the Model 20. But anything made before that, I believe that was before 1957, was simply known as the 3844. This gun has got an incredibly glassy action, but then again, of course, it's about 80 years old. I don't know if that's just because of the old wolf craftsmanship or just that it's been shot enough that the parts have smoothed out. But it has a wonderful trigger pull. The cylinder is not countersunk. The bottom of the shell casing is actually visible when the gun is loaded. But on a gun of this type, it simply isn't necessary to have countersunk cylinders, even if you have a heavy load in the gun. There is so much steel on this thing that uh, it can handle the pressures without anything. There's not a 38 round you can put in here that it can't handle, 38 plus P plus or anything else. Now you might ask yourself, Max, why did you want one of this? Why didn't you just get a 357? I specifically wanted this gun because I wanted a large in-frame 38 that I could shoot any 38 round through, target load or plus P plus, without having to worry about it, 
and without worrying about scoring up the unused part of the inside of the cylinder of a 357 Magnum where that cap is at when you put 38s in there. I know, I know, it sounds like I'm being a purist and a snob. You can clean the gun afterwards, but a couple of 357 owners I know never put 38s to their gun because they just don't like what it does to the inside of the cylinder. That that unused gap can get scored over with a lot of use over time. And uh, I guess it's a bit of a purist thing, but I just really like the idea that I have this in-frame 38 I can go target shoot with that's going to handle any load and I'm using the right round for the right gun. Eh, it's, it's a max thing. So anyway, I really, really, really love this gun and uh, I think personally it has an excellent look to it. Very Indiana Jones. And uh, other than that, guys, oh, since we're speaking of Indy, one quick point. Everyone's probably noticed I wear this fedora when I do these videos. That is not because of my love of Indiana Jones or the Indiana Jones series of movies. I do love them, but that's not why. I'm using a green screen behind me, and I have blonde hair. And if you have blonde hair on a green screen, it tends to be very difficult to chroma key. That's why I'm wearing the hat. Okay, 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 and I really like the Indiana Jones movies. Okay, men should, wear, men should go back to wearing hats. What can I say? Kennedy ruined everything when he didn't wear a hat in inauguration. Okay, I'm getting off point. Guys, Max with fun with guns. Be safe, take care. For those who didn't know, supposedly Kennedy ruined the hat industry in America and set a fashion statement of men not wearing hats because he was sworn in without wearing one. I don't know. I just think they look cool. What do you think? Well, I'm Max, and this has been Fun With Guns, episode 9? Wow, I'm getting up there. So leave your comments below on what you think about the 3844, 38s, 357s, guns in general, the movie, the movie, what you see in the movies, what you see on TV, or men with hats, or... And without hats. Da 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 da